Good evening, uh, dearly beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, brother, you are audible. Okay, uh, thank you. So, good evening, uh, and also a glad good morning to all our dear brothers and sisters and the little ones in our midst. I know we have a um, a good uh, set of people joining us from different parts of the country and also from abroad. Uh, so good evening, good morning to whichever part of the world you logged in today. What a great joy it is uh, for all of us to meet together like this. As we come to the fag end of such an unprecedented year, as much as we remember many of the sufferings, many of the hardships, many of the difficulties that so many of us have to, had to go through. We also have so much to be grateful to the Lord for. And one particular aspect that I'm so grateful, and I'm sure most of us are so grateful for, to the Lord is for this technology platform, where we've been really able to listen and meditate from God's word. While there has been, we've been hearing of disruption in so, supplies of so many things, but praise God that the word of God was there in abundance. I don't think there was a period in time as much that we have got so much of God's word as much as we have during these periods of the lockdown and the other times. So praise God that we have a God who makes wonderful provisions for us. And even better, what better way to end this year than a family, than with a family conference. We thank God for the burden that was placed in the hearts of the organizers to organize this session for us, this conference for us. And let's continue to prayerfully sit before the Lord. Now, before we listen to our um, dear John Curran uncle, just as we were blessed uh, with some beautiful singing yesterday, we have an excellent lineup for this evening too. Now, as we have our beloved ones who come from different parts of India who will be logging in, uh, we will have songs in four different languages which have been presented this evening. So let's prayerfully sit in God's presence. And before we start the singing, can I request our dear brother, Ebi Sam from Assam to please lead us in prayer. And then we will move on to the singing. So can I request brother Ebi Sam? Okay. Is it audible? Yes, brother, you are audible. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Lord and loving Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace. We worship you and adore you. You are our great God and you are our creator and sustainer. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, in our life to redeem us from the bondage of sin. Thank you, Lord, for giving us great opportunity that called us the ch ch children of God. Thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity that was given for us to gather in this uh, virtual media from the different parts of this uh, country, also from abroad. Thank you, Lord, for all the techno uh, technology uh, which we are receiving. As we know that we are going through different circumstances due to this uh, uh, pandemic situation. Thank you, Lord, you provided this technology to meet us and have the fellowship and also hear from the word of God. Thank you for this uh, wonderful ministry. Uh, Lord has endorsed for the organizers. Thank you for their burden to conduct such a meeting uh, through this media. And also we remember your servant who is going to deliver the message and uh, we commit him also at your magic hand and before that, we are going to hear uh, uh, songs uh, from different languages. And we commit all the singers under your mighty hand. They may sing for your own glory. And we may hear and glorify your name. And also for, for the, all the, uh, all the uh, necessary things we may, you may provide for us. And so that this uh, program will go uh, in a very successful manner. And we may bless uh, through your word of God and through this uh, ministry and to commit all the uh, all the necessary things in your mighty hand. We ask these prayers in the precious name of our Lord and of Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, dear brother. 
Um, we can now move on to the uh, singing uh, part. Um, as our dear brother was praying, our prayer this evening is that all the songs, all the session, the session would be purely for the glory of the Lord and that alone. It's not for the glory of any man, but the name of the Lord alone be glorified through the singing that we're going to hear now. So uh, we have our little ones, uh, just as we had yesterday, we have uh, little ones in our midst to start with the first song. So we have our dear Rufus, Gaius, and Charis, who are the children of our dear Santosh Thomas brother, who is going to be singing a Bengali song for us in uh, first. Now, this is a song of surrender, where the songwriter says, Lord, I surrender all at your feet. I have nothing more to give you. Lord Jesus, I want to be found at your feet. As we listen to this first song, this wonderful song that the little ones are going to be singing to us, let us rededicate our lives and let us rededicate our lives and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. So can I call upon Rufus, Gaius and Jairus to take over? Thank you. Uh, thank you, dear children. That was, that was really beautiful. Uh, 
we pray and hope that the Lord continues to use you and continues to uh, use the, the God-given talents that you have for his own glory. Now we have in our midst also Brother uh, Shibu Jos, uh, who will be singing to us a Telugu song. Uh, Brother Shibu Jos, who is from Udumalpet, will be singing to us a Telugu song. Now, uh, this song revolves um, around us taking refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever be, has been our past life, uh, we are now at the disposal of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're surrendering ourselves to the Lord and that he is our father and we're asking him for him to take care of us on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, can I call upon Brother Shibu, uh, who's going to be singing to us uh, about this great God that we have. Over to you, Brother Shibu. Praise the Lord. Good evening. So now I'm going to sing a Telugu song. Thank you. 
ಆಶಯೇತಿ ಕನರಾಗ ಮೇಲನೈದಿನಿ ಬಾದಲಿಂಗ ಪಡಲೇಗ ಸೋಲಿ ಪೋತಿನಿ ಅಲಸಿನ ಕನುಲತೋ ನಿನ್ನು ಚೂಸಲು ಚದರಿನ ಕಲಲತೋ ಕೃಂಜಿ ಪೋಯನು ನನ್ನು ಸೇದದಿಚ್ಚಿ ಸಂತೋಷಿಂಚನಿ ಕೇಸಯ್ಯ ನಾದೈವಯ್ಯ ವಿನವ ಮನವಿ ಕೇಸಯ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭುವ ಶರಣ ನೀವಯ್ಯ ಮಲಿನೂ ನಾಗತ ಪಗಿಲನು ಜೀವಿತ ಚೇಸುಕೋನಿವಸಿ ಯೇಸಯ ವಿನವ ಪ್ರಭುವ thank you thank you dear brother shibu for that wonderful song in telugu indeed he is our god who picked us up from that situation that we were in and brought us to this high pedestal that we are today and praise god uh, we now have our brother uh, john lee charles with us uh, who will now be singing a malayalam song for us uh, can i call upon brother john lee charles uh, who will be singing the malayalam song Praise the Lord. Am I audible? Yes, brother. You are audible. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I am going to be able to sing my song. I am going to be able to sing this song. I am going to be able to sing this song. I am going to be able to sing this song. I am going to be able to sing this song. I am going to be able to sing this song. കർത്താവിൽ ആശ്രയിച്ച് പാടുവാനായിട്ട് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു
Thank you, brother John Lee. Our God is indeed a majestic God, such a holy God that we have. Thank you for those reminders of the attributes of our Lord Jesus Christ. Such a wonderful theme that you took us through. Thank you, dear brother. Now, um, how can we not have a song in Hindi? Uh, you know, our uh, language, the main language of our country. Uh, can I call upon brother Shim Matthew to uh, lead us with a song in Hindi? Brother Shim will lead us in a song in Hindi. प्रभु परमेश्वर तू कितना भला है तेरी भलाई सदा की है प्रभु परमेश्वर तू कितना भला
कठिन समय में तू मजबूत गढ़ है अंधेरी राह में तू जियाला है मेरी दुहाई तू सुनता मेरा प्रभु कभी नहीं सोता कितना भला है तेरी भलाई सदा की है Praise God. What a what a wonderful God we have. What a great God we have. You know, wonderful songs of worship uh that that the Lord brought our dear brothers to uh worshiping him, exalting him, majestic God, holy God. You know, as we heard these various songs took us up to that plane to continue to thank and praise God for what a great God we have. So, thank you dear brothers uh, and the little ones who Uh, spend this time for us may the lord continue to use each of you for his glory and our deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for helping us with this session this evening now before we uh, i know we are all looking forward to listen to our dear john kernanthul before we turn to god's word uh, let's look to the lord for uh, his blessing upon the word and i'd like to request brother uh, dr J- um, john abraham from putnam trivandrum to lead us in prayer uh can i request dr john abraham yeah can you hear me yes brother you are you are audible okay shall we pray precious loving heavenly father we thank you lord for this blessed evening time that you given us lord father god it's really indeed a privilege lord to see so many brothers and sisters lord sitting at your feet to learn from your word father god even though we are distant lord in various places shut up in our houses and rooms lord but we are able lord to come together in fellowship father god through this zoom media lord to listen to your word the precious double edged sword lord which pierces to our marrow lord and knows each and every intention of ours lord father god we thank you lord for the privilege which we have today in this country for this freedom which we have so that lord that your word can be preached in this manner Father God we thank you Lord for all the providences which you have given Lord all the provisions which you have given Lord 
all the capacities which you are given, Lord, even maybe the internet facility, the data, the Zoom, uh, Zoom uh, networking system, everything, Lord, you are prepared beforehand, sort of, during these COVID times, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance of uh, God's word, which is being preached during these times, Lord, abundance of these channels, YouTube channels being opened up, Lord, abundance of these God's word being broadcast in all over the world, all over India, even to, to places, Lord, which has been a worst evangelism, Lord, even there are houses in these particular villages, Lord, which are opening up, Lord, through various languages, various mediums, Lord, this digital network, Lord, is actually penetrating through the heart of India, Lord, and even to the world, Lord, it is being stored for time, and Lord, it is not, and we praise you, Lord, even for the calamities and, and uh, tr turbulent times which we had to go through, Lord, because this is being possible now, Lord, and we thank you for that. Father God, we thank you, Lord, so much for all the organizers of this particular meet, Lord, around 250 people, Lord, to be gathered in this particular manner all over India to your Lord, and even outside, Lord, and we thank you so much for that. Thank you for so the, the Santosh Lord, who actually could uh, could be behind the scenes and allow all these things to happen. And thank you all for the singers, Lord. Thank you for John Lee, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Shimbaya. Thank you for all the singers, Lord, and all the children who are behind this, and we thank you so much for, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the organizers, Lord, from various parts of this country, Lord, which you have brought together in this particular manner. And we praise you, Lord, for Shaluchai and for Sandosh Thom's brother, for uh, Muni Bhaiya, for uh, Sandosh brother, for everybody, Lord, for Ch uh, Rani, Charles John Uncle, and everybody, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord, for all the abundance of mercy you've given us. And now, Lord, as we sit at your feet, Lord, thank you for yesterday's message, Lord, talking about the uniqueness of each and every family relationship. Thank you for reminding us about the family piety, Lord. Thank you for reminding us about the purity, Lord. Thank you, Lord, the, the, the importance of family, Lord, that unit, the family unit which you have set up in this world, Lord. As more and more Christian families are being brought into this world, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you enable us to follow the, the godly principles, Lord, to follow the blueprint which is there in the Bible, Lord, and help us to have spirit-filled families, Lord. Yes, Lord, we know nothing is possible apart from your power which you give to us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Brother John Korean Uncle, Lord, who could actually uh, expound the word to us yesterday, Lord. And today, Lord, as we sit at your feet, Lord, we pray that your spirit might be upon him, Lord, that we might hear what you have in store for us, Lord, that we might be sitting with a prepared heart, Lord, a soil, Lord, a good soil within us, Lord, so that the word might so, uh, might take root in us, Lord, and we might produce fruit for your glory, Lord. We thank you once again, Lord. We pray for your blessings. We ask all these in precious name, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, dear brother, for leading us in prayer. You know, like I was saying before, what better way to end this year than with a family conference of this sort or a gathering of this sort. Now, unlike most years or unlike most times, we all got a lot of time this year and we can't complain that we don't get enough time with family this was a year that we really got time to spend with our families that we were maybe we were forced or we were not but we got a lot of time with our families and uh, this is a god-given opportunity uh, over these two days when we are able to reflect understand where we are as far as our family life is concerned and improve on this very 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 critical aspect of us as believers while we live on this earth now, our dear brother yesterday was uh, speaking about the need for an awareness of the importance of family life. Now, over these two days, the Lord is using our dear uncle uh, to speak to all of us, who, whichever bucket or whichever group we might be in. Uncle was yesterday talking about, you know, three groups of people. It could be those who are already married, those who are, uh, you know, looking out to be married, or it could even be parents who are looking out for marriage for their own children. But there is a word for each and every one of us. And as we were remembering in prayer, there are more than 250 people on this uh, platform. There are many more on the YouTube channel. Let's continue to sit with a prayerful heart as we were remembering in prayer with a submissive heart that we might be used as families for the glory of God. You know, this is the time when it is the most required and it is the most important time that our families have to be testimonies in front of the world that we have. So let's let's sit with a prayerful heart and submissive, uh, submitting ourselves at the Lord's feet that uncle would be able to give the word that is required for us. Uncle needs no introduction whatsoever, so I'm not going down that path, so straight over to 
John Cleland could take over from now. Good evening and uh, praise the Lord. It's exciting and uh, encouraging to see so many brothers and sisters from different countries in the world who have gathered together just to listen to God's word. Yesterday, we were talking about the importance of family. I wanted to create an awareness in the minds of all those who are listening to me concerning the seriousness of family life. Now we looked at various points and we looked at many reasons why we should take family seriously. And we considered that family is something very, very important to God. What is important to God should be important to us. What is unimportant to God should be unimportant to us also. So tonight, we want to go on from there, having considered the seriousness and importance of family life. Tonight, we are going to talk about how to enter into this most serious business of family life, how to get married, how to discern the will of God, and how to sustain a godly family. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, it would take several days for us to cover various aspects of family life. We do not have time for that. So tonight, we will just look at a few aspects of family life. Last night, after the meeting, uh, I received a very encouraging message from a, a student who is unmarried. And the message said that the Lord spoke to that student when uh, 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 the conference was going on, when the message was being given. And that student was greatly encouraged to hear these things even prior to marriage. Now tonight, I believe there are many listening to me. Most of you are married and there are others who are not married. And I hope and pray that all of us may be helped alive. Those who are married should be encouraged to live a more godly family life. And those who are not yet married should be encouraged to seek the face of God so that they will enter into this most uh, uh, important relationship with, with a, a sense of responsibility. Now tonight, I would like to take a different strategy and would like to uh, take you through some PowerPoints so that you can understand things step by step. You can read what is written on the screen. And if you want to take them down, you're free to do that. And uh, I think that will help us to understand the truths in a better way. So shall we uh, start tonight with our topic again? Now, Now, we are going to talk, first of all, about preparing for marriage. Now, the question would arise, is it necessary to prepare? What is there to prepare to get married? Well, let us remember that we prepare for everything in life. We prepare for school. We prepare to go to university. We prepare for competitions and preparation shows the importance we give to things. And let us remember in the book of Genesis, God prepared Adam before his marriage. That is God gave him certain duties and responsibilities so that he can perform well after he gets his wife. So preparation is necessary in all areas of our life. And therefore, preparation is necessary 
uh, no need to say for this most important thing in life. Now, we know uh, this slogan, prepare before we repair. Now, as I talk to you tonight, I want to touch upon many practical aspects of marriage and family life. Now, in our midst, we know that we are facing a lot of problems in these areas, and very often we just uh, present some theories about marriage, like philosophies, and we don't touch upon the real issues. But tonight, I would like to touch upon the real issues in marriage so that we can be prepared before we repair. Very often what happens in our community is many of us get into trouble and then we are running around to see how this problem can be solved. Well, if there is a problem, we have to repair, no doubt, but there is a better thing that we can do, that is to prepare before we repair. So may the Lord help us as we go through these slides and listen to these biblical truths that we might prepare ourselves. Those who are not married may prepare themselves to get married. And those elderly parents who are looking for uh, uh, a mate for their children may be uh, helped to look for the right person and to consider marriage seriously. Now, last night we looked at the importance of marriage and family. So we will just go through them again, not all of them, just quickly make a mention of them. Marriage is divine in origin. I explained it uh, uh, really well. And we saw that marriage is the first institution established by God. And we also saw that it is, a, it is the means to carry out God's program for this world. And the first and strongest human bone that God has created is the bone between husband and wife. Now, why should we talk about these things now? Now, there is a very special reason because there are so many distorted worldly views on marriage. And we are getting exposed to many of those wrong ideas and especially our young people in universities and in their workplace are getting exposed to many of these wrong and distorted views on marriage. So it is very important to know what the scripture teaches about marriage so that we will not be misled by these wrong views. These are some of the wrong views and you know what this means. This is becoming very, very popular now. The gay movement, the homosexual movement, the lesbian movement, these are all taking momentum and that has begun to influence even Christian people in different parts of the world. And we need to be always alert against these distorted worldly views on marriage. Now, biblically speaking, what is the purpose of marriage? Let us get it clear and straight in our mind. What does the Bible teach about the purpose of marriage? Now, I'm not taking much time to explain them too much, but the first, very first thing mentioned about marriage is found in Genesis 2.18, that verse we read last night, God saw that it was not good that man be alone, and God said, I will make him a helper suitable for him. So marriage was designed to share life, sharing of life. I think that is the first and primary purpose of marriage, partnership. And the second uh, aspect of marriage or purpose is pleasure. God is interested in our well-being and he wants us to enjoy pleasure in every sense. He wants us to enjoy pleasure as we share our love with our partner. That includes physical and sexual pleasure also and also a sense of belonging and an assurance that there is someone to love me, there is someone to care for me, that gives us a sense of pleasure 
comfort and rest in our heart. And God who loves us and who is intensely interested in our well-being design marriage not only for partnership but for our pleasure and of course the third one procreation in genesis 128 we read god uh, giving this instruction to uh, adam and eve to replenish multiply and fill the earth so god expects husbands and wives to produce children and thereby fulfill God's plan for this world. And the fourth purpose is proclamation. That is proclaim God's love to the world through this relationship of husbands and wives. You know what that talks about? God uses the family relationship to teach the world about his providence, love and faithfulness. In Isaiah 49 and verse 15, you know, we read about a mother and child. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yeah, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. See, God uses the picture of a family to talk about his love for us. In Isaiah 66, 13, we read, Almost the same thing, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort them. They shall be comforted in Jerusalem. The love of a mother for her child is uh, given here as a picture of God's love for us. Now, in Ezekiel 16, verses 1 to 5, we read about the unfaithfulness of Jerusalem. It is portrayed, uh, 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 and it is compared to uh, uh, committing a uh, harlotry or adultery. And in Isaiah 54 and verse 5, we read, for your maker is your husband. Now, all these verses talk about relationships in family. And God uses the picture of family to talk about his love for humanity or his love for his own people. In Hosea 2 and verse 7, we read, Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband. When, talks, when God talks about his relationship with his people, he uses the illustration of families. So one purpose of family is to proclaim, declare God's love for the people in the world and God's love for his own people. And all of us are familiar with this passage in Ephesians 5, verses 31 and 32. It says, the great mystery, how marriage emulates the relationship between Christ and his bride, the church. So we are to communicate the gospel to the world by leading an exemplary family life. In Ephesians chapter 5, Apostle Paul talks about the responsibilities of wives and husbands. And then before he concludes that passage, he says, though I am talking about husbands and wives, I have something greater, far more important in my mind. I speak concerning Christ and the church. Let us remember this. The relationship between a husband and wife is a miniature picture of the love relationship between God and us or Christ and the church. So we represent Christ and the church through our family life in this world. Now, I want to say something very important here. If we do not live a good family life, if we are careless and unfaithful in our family life, I believe we will be held responsible by God for misrepresenting Christ and the church in the world. God has established us as families in this world so that through our love relationship with our spouse, we might manifest the love relationship that Christ has for the church. <clears throat> when I live a careless married life, when I do not love my wife properly, when my wife does not submit to me properly, we are giving a distorted picture 
of Christ and the church to the world. So dear brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, let us all remember this. We will be held guilty by God for misrepresenting his con, his cause on this earth if we do not live good family lives. That is a pretty serious matter. Let us uh, take care to see that we live a good family life. Now, <clears throat> this is a stop sign. All of us know that this says don't enter. That's the meaning. This road is blocked. Danger, be careful. Caution, do not enter into marriage for the wrong reason. You know, many people enter into marriage for the wrong reason. Now, some of those reasons are depicted here. Some people get married to go abroad. I don't have to explain that. All of you know that. Some people look at money and get married. Some people look at the job of the boy or the girl and get married. And some people are attracted by the outer beauty, the handsomeness of the boy or the beauty of the girl, and they get married. They forget what Proverbs 31, 30 says, charm is deceitful and beauty is empty. But a woman who fears the Lord, she is going to be praised. Now we must make sure that we get married for the right reason. All young people who are not yet married, please make a note of this. And parents who are considering marriage for their children must make sure that they get married for the right reason. Now, sometimes in our community, in our society, people say the father and mother are old. There's nobody to look after them. So you better get married. We tell our children to be tell our sons so that we will get someone to take care of the old father and mother. Now that is not the purpose of marriage. It is true that once a girl, that is uh, uh, my son's wife comes into the house, she will definitely have to take care of the old parents. There's no doubt about it. That is a responsibility, but that is not the purpose of getting married. These days, it is so difficult to get servants to cook for us and to do any kind of work. Even if they are available, you really have to pay them a very high salary. So the best thing is to get married so that I'll get somebody to cook for me. That again is a wrong purpose. Now, this might look like a joke, but I am telling you the truth. This is happening in many homes. And instead of hiring a servant, they hire a, a wife so that she can always be cooking. Well, once she comes into the house, it is true that she has to cook, but that is not the purpose of marriage. If you young men get married for the wrong reason, you will really not enjoy your married life. If you treat your wife as cook, no doubt, your wife is going to treat you as head cook. It will not be husband and wife. So the caution notice says, do not enter into marriage for the wrong reason. Why to enter into marriage? So that you can share your love and your life with someone. So that you can enjoy the pleasure that God has intended in marriage. So that you can present before the world a good picture of Christ and the church. Also, so that you can produce children and fulfill God's plan and purpose for the world. Please don't get married for money. Don't get married to go abroad. Don't get married because servants are not available. Don't get married because you want someone to cook and wash for you. They are all unbiblical reasons to get married. Get married for the right reason and give the person who comes into your house, uh, the girl that comes in, proper dignity as a wife and partner and not as a servant, not just as someone who would help you in cooking and washing. Now this is there in the minds of so many people. So I wanted to bluntly say that. Now we were talking about preparation. We said that in order to enter a university or college, we prepare. 
but there is hardly any preparation for getting married. Now, marriage is a union of two individuals. It is the coming together of two different worlds. Two worlds are coming together in marriage. It is not just two people. You know, these two people are from two different backgrounds. Two, they are two different personalities. They have two different perspectives. They have uh, different experiences. They have different expectations and they have different aspirations. So it is not a simple thing, a boy and a girl coming together saying, we will live together. It looks like a simple thing, but it is actually two worlds colliding in a sense, two worlds coming together. Two people drawn and brought up in two different homes, two different backgrounds who were brought up with two different expectations and aspirations and perspectives in life, when they come together, it is not going to be easy because two worlds are going to be merged. What was right in this house may be wrong in that house. What was appreciated in this house is denounced in the other house. What was highly esteemed in this house is looked down upon in the other house. And so there is going to be adjustment problem when two worlds come together. That is why we need preparation because marriage is a union of two individuals and two worlds coming together. Therefore, they need to be well prepared and well equipped to embark upon this lifelong journey together. Yesterday, I tried to em emphasize this fact that this is a lifelong relationship. Only death can separate this relationship. Once you are in it, you are in it for life. There's no scope for resignation or any such thing. Therefore, this being a lifelong journey together and a lifelong relationship, you have to be well prepared and well equipped before you enter into this relationship. Once you enter in, you cannot say, oh, I didn't know this. I didn't know that it was like this. I cannot go on, so I am backing out. My friend, you just cannot say that. That is why it is so important to be well prepared and well equipped before you embark upon this lifelong journey together. Preparation for the marriage is more important than the wedding. You know, the word marriage refers to married life. The wedding refers to the ceremony that takes place on a particular day, wedding ceremony. I hope you understand the difference between the two. Now, let me ask uh, all my dear friends a question. We prepare more for the wedding or for the marriage. In most cases, I must say that we prepare a lot for the wedding. Some prepare, some people prepare in, a, uh, uh, in advance, a year or two in advance. They think about all the details, the wedding gown, the dress to be worn on that day, the flower and the flower girls and the best men and the bridesmaid, the auditorium or the church where the event should take place, takes place, then the food and the music and the choir and uh, invitations and the wedding card, all sorts of things we prepare, we plan. We put so many hours into thinking and preparing and planning, even praying about the, the proper conduct of the wedding. Is it not true? So many hours are spent and months and months of preparation goes into a wedding event. But tell me honestly, think about it. Is there so much preparation for marriage? For two people living together, what preparation is there? You just find a girl, someone proposes, you go and see the girl and she looks like a good girl or a good boy and then you fix the date and you get married. What a sad thing that is. You need to prepare more for your marriage life than for the wedding celebration. That is very, very 
important. Now here again, we have warnings. What is the warning that we are going to talk about? Do not enter into it lightly or hastily. Now these days, you see a lot of people enter in, into marriage in haste. I'm sure you also have come across this and I, I am sure you will say what I'm saying is right. People say the boy has only one week's uh, vacation, he's working abroad, he will come this Monday and he has to leave next Monday. The engagement and the wedding should take place within this week. And uh, this uh, proposal came suddenly from somebody and we don't have much time to, you know, go into the details of it. So let us get it done quickly. I want to tell all my brothers and sisters, please don't enter into marriage in a hurry. If you marry in haste, you will repent at leisure. If you marry in haste, you will not have enough time to pray about it. You will not get enough time to prepare. You will not get enough time to make proper inquiry about the boy and the girl. And in a hurry, you, you go through certain things and then you uh, fix the date and you get married in haste and later you repent at leisure. Let this not happen to any of our children. Let this not happen to any young boy, any young girl. If there is hurry, please wait. Give time, give time to think about it. Give time for the Lord to give you a sense of direction. Give time to God to give you indicators as to whether you should go ahead or not. So dear brothers and sisters, make sure that you do not enter into it hastily or lightly. Now, the best preparation, we are talking about preparation, right? The best preparation that we can do is to prepare ourselves. If I'm getting married, the best preparation I can do is to prepare myself. Determine to work on yourself with God's help to become the best person spiritually, emotionally, physically, and socially. So I should focus on my own preparation if I'm going to get married. Very often we focus on the other person. Is the other person good? How is she spiritually? How is she emotionally? How is she physically? How is she socially? We always think about the other side. But what about your side? Ask this question. How are you spiritually? Do you have the spiritual maturity to enter into marriage? Are you emotionally mature to enter into such a serious relationship? I want to tell a word to all the parents here. One mistake that we make as we bring up our children, we give them good education. We give them a lot of money. We send them to the best school and we want to see them come up in life as engineers or doctors or whatever. But very often we forget to prepare them spiritually. We forget to bring them up to spiritual maturity. Now I'm not talking about being perfect. None of us are perfect. No young man can become perfect. No old person also can become perfect. But there is a degree of maturity, a sense of maturity, a sense of discernment that all young men and women should attain to before they get married. We know, as I said earlier, two worlds are going to come together. Lot of adjustment is needed. You need to understand each other. You need to forgive one another very often. You need to close your eyes to many things. You need to humble yourself very often. And you need to give place to the other person. You need to cooperate. You need to listen to the other person. These things are not easy for children of Adam. We being children of Adam, we are all basically selfish, all of us, me and you, all of us. We are all basically selfish. It is not going to be easy to forgive. 
It is not easy, going to be easy to heal. It is not going to be easy to make adjustments and not easy to cooperate fully. And therefore, if we are not spiritually mature, if we do not have the spiritual understanding and the maturity to love and to forgive and to humble ourselves, we will find our married life to be very, very difficult. I want to exhort all young men and women who are not married to prepare yourself spiritually because it will take a lot of spirituality to function as a good husband and a good wife. You need to be a spiritual person to love unselfishly and to forgive and to make adjustments in life. And I want to encourage all parents to help your children to attain to some sort of spiritual maturity so that they will be able to step into marriage with a sense of confidence, of course, of trusting in God, and also with a sense of spiritual maturity. So make sure that you prepare yourself before you enter into this relationship. Now, when we talk about preparation, the first aspect of preparation is spiritual preparation. Now, what is meant by spiritual preparation? Maintain good intimate fellowship with God in your personal life. Look at this diagram, this triangle. There is God on top, there is wife on one side and husband on the other side. Now, the closer the wife and husband get to God, the closer they get to get together or get to each other. The further you go away from the point God on top, the further you go away from each other. So the first area where you need preparation is your spiritual area. And what is the preparation needed there? You must learn to have an intimate daily walk with God. You must learn to have constant communion with God. Maintain a hot wire with God all the time. Sit and meditate upon God and his word every morning. Develop the habit of quiet time. Take time to spend in prayer. Learn to talk to God about every little thing in your personal life. Depend on God totally and enjoy intimacy with God and walk in intimate fellowship with God every day of your life. I should say that is the most important preparation that you need to make. As a young girl, as a young boy, you need to develop an intimate fellowship with God in your personal life, and that will definitely help you in your married life. Now, study of scriptural responsibilities of husbands and wives. Before you get married, look into the scriptures and see what the scriptures demand of you as a husband or as a wife. And when you consider marriage, you should also look at your life from God's perspective. What has God called me for? And when you consider a person uh, uh, as your life partner, understand how your partner can help you in fulfilling your life's calling. Now, I, I'm sorry to say that many young people do not have a sense of calling in their life. What are you going to do? What do you want to accomplish in life? Nothing. I just want to get a good job, make a lot of money, buy the most modern car, build a good house, and live there happily with my wife. That is all that is there in front of many young people. But if you are a child of God, you need to have a higher sense of calling. God has called each one of us, men and women, and he has endowed us with spiritual gifts. And God has a definite plan for your life. He wants you to accomplish certain things for the extension of God's kingdom. All of you may not go into full-time ministry or may not go into mission fields. That is okay. But wherever you are, God has a plan and purpose for your life and make sure what your calling is. What is God's plan for my life? What does God want to accomplish 
in and through my life. And when you consider a person for marriage, make sure that your partner also uh, can help you in fulfilling God's call of your life. Now, a second area of preparation is mental or emotional preparation. The first one I said, establish a close walk with God, spiritual preparation, and be sure of your call and consider a person who would suit, who would be suitable to help you fulfill your call. The second area is mental or emotional preparation. Now, what is that? You should identify and deal with negative emotions before entering into marriage. There are people who have uh, all sorts of problems emotionally. Some people are sure to short tempered. Some people cannot handle uh, uh, stress. Some people uh, do not know what to do when they are faced with difficulties in life and they behave in very weird uh, manner. So there are all sorts of emotional problems that we face. Uh, maybe some people right from their childhood and some people have the problem of depression. Some people even have, you know, uh, uh, slight mental issues also. And if you know that you have any of these things, please deal with those negative things before entering into marriage. Now, one mistake that many of our people make is they think that once she is married, once she is married, the problem will be over. Marriage will solve the problem. I want to tell all young people and also all the parents that marriage will not cure these problems. It will only expose and aggravate them, affecting the marriage relationship. This has happened in many, many families. They did not deal with their emotional problems. They did not take treatment. They did not take medicine. They did not take counseling. They just left it as it is. And once they got married and they began to share life with another person, when they began to face crisis in life, difficulties in life, then they could not hold any longer. They just burst forth and they react in anger and they sometimes get depressed and their partner is in real trouble. So please make sure that you deal with these issues before you get married. This is how many marriages look like. That is because they did not learn how to handle anger. Now, the third idea of preparation is personal life preparation. That is, first we said spiritual preparation, then mental and emotional, and thirdly, personal life preparation. That is self-management and self-control. You know, we read in the book of Proverbs that a man who does not have self-control is like a city that has no war. So self-management is controlling uh, your uh, anger and uh, uh, living a disciplined life. An amount of self-control has to be there in your life. You know, you need to uh, learn to be calm. You need a sense of determination. You need some confidence. You need willpower. And you need to control yourself before you get married. Now, it is very, very important that uh, you learn self-control. You know, there are people who do not have control over their eating habits. There are people who have no control over their sleeping habits. There are people who have no control over the evil habits that they are a slave to. For example, pornography. Some people are slaves to it. And uh, they have no uh, self-discipline in many areas of their life. It is very important that they deal with those areas before they get married. Now, compatibility in marriage is a very, very important thing. Look at this picture. An eggshell broken into two. And on one, there is a projection. And on the exact half of that eggshell, there will be a depression. That is called compatibility. So in Amos 3 and 3, we read, can two walk together except they be agreed? 
in that verse uh, in Mark's gospel, the Lord Jesus said, if a house is divided in itself, it cannot stand. So you need to have a certain amount of compatibility so that you can get along well. Now, uh, even in that area, the first area is spiritual compatibility. That is, both the partners should be the children of God with similar commitment, passion, and disciplines in their daily walk with God and in their life's calling. Both have to be believers. Both have to be committed. And they should have an understanding about their life's calling. That is spiritual compatibility. If a person who is spiritually minded, if he marries a girl who is totally carnally minded, who is not at all interested in spiritual things, you're going to have a very difficult time. If you are, have a calling for full-time ministry and the girl you marry has absolutely no interest in it, you're going to have a tough time. So make sure that you are compatible spiritually. Secondly, emotional and intellectual compatibility. That's the ability to connect and understand and relate to each other emotionally and intellectually with common areas of interest. Now, this does not mean a graduate should marry only a graduate. This does not mean a doctor should marry only a doctor or an engineer should marry a, only an engineer. That's not what is meant by this. What is meant is there should be a common platform on which both of you can relate to each other. You should be able to connect to one another when you communicate. So emotionally and intellectually, there should be common areas of interest. If your interests are far apart, and if your intellectual capacities are far apart, and emotionally you are on two different ends, you may find it difficult to get along as you face life. Now, it is very important that you be able to understand your communication properly when you communicate with your partner. Now, physical compatibility also is important. Now, a liking or an attraction to each other or appreciation for one another is very important. Now, this does not mean that a beauty has to play the main role, no. Don't think of beauty as the most important thing in marriage. I'm not talking about that. But the person whom you are considering to marry, when you prayerfully consider that person, you should definitely have a liking for that person. When you see that person, there should be a sense of attraction to that person. And you should also have a spirit of appreciation for that person. That is very, very important. Now, uh, if you do not have an attraction or liking for that person that you're planning to get married to, you will have a very difficult time. If you just don't like the face of that person and you somehow get married, you will have trouble. Now, when you consider marriage, you should watch out for problem indicators and warning signs. What are some of the warning signs? Character weakness, mental instability, immaturity, parental control, over-dependence uh, should be addressed before marriage. You know, when you consider marriage and you talk to a person, you understand that that person is mentally unstable or he or she is immature and you find out there is too much of parental control on that person or they are too much dependent on their uh, parents. Such issues should be sorted out and clarified before you get married. Now, the most important aspect in marriage is discerning the will of God in choosing your life partner. Now, how do you discern the will of God? That's a very big subject. We cannot go into all the details, but I would quickly take you to Genesis 24 without reading those verses. Most of you are familiar with those verses. All the parties involved in Genesis 24 that is the wedding of Isaac with Rebekah. One good thing that you see there, Abraham and Eliezer, the girl's people, the girl and the boy, all the people involved in that marriage, they look to God for guidance and they 
get a sense of leading from God. You can read Genesis 24 and find out what I'm saying. Abraham looks to God, Elias looks to God, and he prays, oh God, show me the girl appointed for my master's son. He's not saying, just show me any good girl. But he's say, she's saying, uh, uh, Elias is saying, that servant, show me that girl who is appointed by God for my master's son. So the most important thing in marriage is all the people involved, the parents and those who are going to get married, they should look to God for guidance prayerfully so that God will guide them. And prayer and study of scriptural teachings on marriage will help you in decision making. What are the scriptural principles of marriage? And what does God expect of you? And as you consider marriage, please consider these things. I want to suggest two very good verses for those who want to know the will of God. In Psalm 25, verse 12, it says, Who is he that fear of the Lord? Him shall he teach the way that he should go. And Psalm 32, 8 also is a good verse. I want to recommend this verse to all the young people and also those who are contemplating marriage for their children. You know, these verses say that if you truly fear God and want to do only the will of God, God has promised to show you what his will is. Now consider the person you recognize as the one whom God you are being guided to and the one you sense is the most suitable for you. So when you prayerfully wait upon God, you sense God's leading and you feel that this is the person to whom God is guiding you. And when you have a sense of leading from God, now that is the time when you should very carefully put your steps forward. And the most important thing is you should have a sense of peace in your heart and the one that you choose with God's guidance and his peace in your heart following biblical principles then becomes the one for you. When you pray, when you wait upon God, you follow biblical principles and you experience God's peace in your heart, then you know that you are following the right track. Now, it is very important that you consider the support and approval of parents and spiritual mentors wherever possible. Young people, there are certain things that you cannot see, but your parents can see, your mentors can see. So don't jump into a decision. Oh, she is good looking, he is handsome. I think she is the person, he is the person. Don't come to such conclusions. Pray about it and seek parental approval and guidance so that your mentors and elders and spiritual people can guide you and give you a good piece of advice on this. Now, once you get married, it is very important that you sustain that marriage in a manner that is honoring to God. Now, the reason why I spend so much time on talking about preparation is that is the foundation. In many marriage problems I have seen, many of them have confessed that we had problems even before we got married. We had indicators that say, don't go ahead. They had seen red light, but they ignored it. That should not happen to anyone. All the parents and also all the young people involved should make sure that you take time to pray and discern the will of God before you enter into this relationship. And once you enter into this relationship, it is very important that you sustain this marriage as God honoring. Now, if you want a God honoring marriage, both the partners have to work together to achieve the best in marriage. Strong growing marriages do not happen automatically. Good marriages, you know, are cultivated, taking time and effort. Husbands and wives, don't think that your marriage will become a good one automatically. No, both have to work at it. You need to pray about it. You need to discuss. You need to spend time together. You need to sort out problems. Working together is very important for growing marriages. Seek the face of God earnestly for grace and divine wisdom. 
because we have no strength in ourselves to live a good married life therefore every day separately and also together see god's face say oh god we have no strength in ourselves to love to forgive to adjust to give in to ill we need your grace we are children of adam though we are god's children we still have the old nature in us we need your help we need your grace you must cry out to god for strength and grace and god will surely give it to you there are many biblical guidelines to maintain a godly marriage we have no time to explain them romans 15:7 talks about accepting one another now that verse is not talking about husbands and wives but i want to apply that to this uh, primary the strongest relationship in human life accept one another and appreciate the worth of your spouse and the person whom god has given you treat that person with dignity so the first step is you should accept your partner just as she is or just as he is and commit yourself to serve one another in romans 15 verse 1 and verse 3 we talk about we read about pleasing one another mark 10:45 is the example of jesus when he said i have come not to be served unto but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many sir uh, commit yourself to serve the other person and meet the other person's need love one another that is repeated in john's gospel chapter 15 verse 12 chapter 13 verse 34 forgive one another that is also repeatedly said in colossians 3 and ephesians 4 there is no perfect husband or perfect wife you will all have to forgive one another and therefore practice forgiveness follow biblical command to leave and cleave that means once you are married your partner should become the most important person in your life your parents should step back and you should give priority in consulting in pleasing to your partner and you can definitely consult your parents but only both of you should discuss things first pray together then if you want to consult them you can but priority is always to your partner the physical relationship that god has designed in marriage should be enjoyed meeting each other's need live together with understanding now a man is different psychologically from a woman and a woman is different from a man you need to understand these differences and relate to each other spend quality time together maintaining proper communication talk about any issues that you may have in your marriage and above all pray together bringing everything to god in prayer so it is very very important that you live a life of prayer and finally resolve conflicts at the earliest if you face problems take it to the lord and resolve it at the earlier make sure that you are always transparent with each other and there should be no secrets in your married life in conclusion let me say there is always scope for improvement in married life we can climb higher to enjoy all that god has in store for our family life and part of the abundant life christ came to give can be experienced in our marriage i wish if we had more time to talk in about the details of married life but i just want to conclude by saying it is very important to marry the right person with good preparation and a sense of compatibility don't rush into it and once you are married commit yourself to serve one another please one another and depend on god totally for grace from above now we had only just two days and we were running through various aspects of the family life and uh, uh maybe give attention to this most important relationship in life and seek the face of god for grace so that we will be able to live a life pleasing to god and build a godly home for god's glory thank you for your presence your prayer support and i hope and pray that these thoughts will be of great help to each and every one of you thank you uh thank you 
once again thank God for using uh, our dear uncle with a word this evening. Uh, very clearly, you know, we were able to see this evening from the word how to handle the most practical aspects or the real issues. You know, it, it was so glad to see that it wasn't a general session, but it was a session that was so specific, you know, where uncle was able to look at each and every important aspect of the problems or the difficulties that we face. We heard what the clear purpose of marriage is. We saw very clearly how we should get married only for the right reason. You know, we had a reminder of how, just as we heard yesterday, of how this is a lifelong relationship and how a lifelong relationship needs so much of preparation. The need for spiritual, emotional, physical, and social preparation. And most importantly, I think the last part which Uncle brought out so well was how to seek the will of God. You know, which, which for many of us some, is many times a difficult aspect of how to seek the will of God. And let we, and you know, our prayer and hope this evening is that three, through both of these sessions that we heard, that this would help those of us who are already married to have a more holy and a fruitful married life. And for those who are looking out for a mate, as we remembered in the days ahead, that they would be able to enter into married life in the days ahead, better prepared. And of course, for those who are looking for their children for a mate, that they would be better prepared as they pray and look out for the right mate for their children. Now let's ponder over these things. Many a times we hear all of these things. It's no dearth as we heard in our uh, beginning prayer too for want of word. We have a lot of word. Let's ponder over these things and put to practice the last slide that we saw, the biblical guidelines that were so clearly shown by the Lord to our dear brother uncle, that these guidelines that we would be able to apply in our day-to-day -day life, which is the most important aspect, that we would be able to apply these biblical item, uh, guidelines in our day-to-day -day life so that we have a marriage, we have a family life that is honoring God with abundant life. So thank God. Thank you, Uncle, for that session. Um, I will now hand over to um, uh, our brother, Sam jones Cherian to give us the vote of thanks. So over to you, Sam Cherian. First of all, and above all, we thank God for having made it possible. And may God's name be glorified through all this All India Zoom Brethren Family Meet 2020. And we would like to thank uh, Evangelist John Korean from uh, Kotayam. Uh, we would like to uh, thank uh, for these two evenings for the beautiful messages from the Word of God, which edified us uh, so intensely so that we are so challenged from the Word of God. We would like to uh, thank Appa uh, for his messages. And also we would like to thank uh, our MCs, Brother Godwin George Delhi and uh, Brother George Matthew from Chennai. And also for all those who prayed uh, before and after and during these meetings. And we all, we thank uh, for all the prayer partners and especially for the singers who helped us from all over India, from North India and South India, from different states who have helped us in our singing session. And also for the, all the organizers and the sub-organizers who represented different uh, states of India, we would like to thank especially uh, Brother uh, Santos Johnson, who was our main organizer from Kodambakkam Christian Assembly. Uh, we would thank uh, Santos Johnson uncle also. And all the participants from India and abroad, uh, we had on uh, Zoom and YouTube uh, live link. Uh, yesterday, more than 400 uh, participants attended. And today also uh, through Zoom, uh, around uh, 300 and YouTube link around 100 and uh, more than 400 participants also today they could uh, gather as a family and hear the word of God. I would like to make a few announcements and God willing, uh, next uh, All India Brethren Zoom Family Meet is on the 22nd and 23rd February 2021. So God willing, uh, we are planning to have All India Brethren Zoom Family Meet on 22nd and 23rd February, Monday and Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. 
So uh, we will have a special speaker, uh, Evangelist Santosh Thomas from Jamtara, uh, Jharkhand State. And uh, there will be a Hindi translation also. The message will be in English. And there will be a translation uh, in the language of Hindi. So uh, people uh, who know Hindi also could uh, gather and attend these meetings also. So please start praying from now itself and encourage others uh, about this meeting to join and so that uh, God's name may be glorified. And secondly, the recorded message of both these uh, days, yesterday's and today's will be available on YouTube channel, uh, GLMK TV, so that you can go at any time and you can watch these messages. So uh, you can go to the YouTube channel, GLMK TV, and you can browse all these messages. Now over to Brother George Matthew. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Sam, John Sterling, for the word of thanks. And, uh, uh, you know, the Lord has been really grateful. Uh, but it be, you know, the Lord has really used the last two uh, days for us uh, with very powerful word of God and uh, some beautiful singing that we were blessed with. Um, so as we close this particular conference here. Uh, let's continue to be thankful to the Lord for all his ways and let's continue to uphold the organizers who uh, have been able to organize this session for our benefit. Uh, let's continue to pray that the Lord leads them and continues to use them for his glory alone. Um, in closing, can I request um, uh, Brother uh, Murugateri uh, from uh, Bombay. Uh, we request our brother uh, Joy Murungateri from Bombay to please close this session in prayer and benediction. Brother Joy Murungateri, please. Yes. Shall we pray? A strong deliverer, our Lord, and a loving Heavenly Father, we lift up our hearts unto thee in thanksgiving giving thanks for the gift of thy well-beloved Son, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. And we thank thee for him, exalted far above all, and crowned with glory. And we have him on our behalf in the throne room before the Father in heaven, and therefore we are able to continue here on this earth. We appreciate thy affectionate visitation in our life in these couple of days through thy beloved servant and our esteemed brother John from Cotayam. We thank thee for preparing him and using him in the midst of thy dear people bringing before us the divine counsel for the preparation and for the continuation of the married life here on this earth, taking us back to its institution and bringing before us the glorious picture of the church and the Lord Jesus Christ, and also take us further. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and the wife is arrayed in fine linen, the righteousness of the saints, the marriage of the Lamb is going to come. How important institution it is, what God gifted to us in thy precious word. And we read in thy word, the word of God has come to the family. Come thou and all thy house into the ark. And therefore we do understand this family is so precious in the sight of God. What is precious in the sight of God must be precious unto us. We acknowledge the fact we live in a day the Christian home is torn apart by nature, various crime, and there is a great work of repair and we thank thee Thy servant has brought before us such a divine instruction. Now it is our responsibility to take heed unto what is brought before us. We may stay by, we may abide by what is taught us in scripture. And we pray for the richest blessing 
upon the good word ministered unto will have great impact on each individual people who are married and the people who are living in expectation of marriage and so we pray oh god of heaven bless thy word and make it fruitful to the praise of thy glory bless thy dear servant and continue to use him for building innumerable christian home on this earth we thank thee for his beautiful family and god given ministry we thank thee for the responsible brethren behind managing this uh, couple of days uh, ministry and we thank thee for all of them thou art the one who laid in their heart such a great burden and it is absolutely god given gift and to bring thy people together under this channel and so we pray for them bless them all and we remember for the johnson thy seven and all the dear servants and also we seek the blessing upon the coming event uh, the meeting in the month of february and we pray our father thy children may set a part time and come together and sit under the sound of thy word this is most needed in these days and so we pray may we succeed by applying holy scripture in building a christian home for the fulfillment of the divine and eternal purpose of god on this earth giving thanks waiting in expectation of thy coming we ask in the name and for the glory of our lord and savior jesus christ amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ in its fullness divine and the everlasting love of the heavenly father and the constant fellowship of the holy spirit continue to abide with each one present here on this channel and with every saints of god around the globe and in particular upon thy servant who ministered unto us thy holy word now and forever and ever amen 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 thank you everyone once again for joining in thank you and have a blessed evening and a wonderful new year ahead